Hey, it's Tom from WPWithTom.com, and in this video, I'll be covering the Elementor Pro Portfolio Widget. So if you don't already have Elementor Pro, I highly recommend that you pick it up. And if you want to do so and support my channel, you can get it at WPWithTom.com slash Elementor. I should also mention that I have videos coming out regularly on Elementor Pro widgets. And if you want to see more of them, be sure to subscribe. So with that out of the way here, let's dive into this Elementor portfolio tutorial. All right, the first thing that we'll need to do is drag and drop in the portfolio widget. So in the pro section, we're going to just drag it and drop it right in here. And by default, you can see that these populate in here with these images. So how this happens is it actually pulls from this query section. So if we go over to where it says query, we can see that it says source posts. And if you look back here, I just created these quick dummy posts here. And let's just go and click edit on one so you can see what it looks like. So right here, you can see that it actually has nothing in there. But the featured image is this image that I've added in here for this with this mountains. So if I were to go over here, you can see that this mountain one is the one that was selected. It says mountains right there. That's also the name of the post mountains right here. So that is where it's pulling from with this query enabled. So if we went over and went to layout right here, we can adjust the columns, the post per page, the image size, things like that. So let's just dive into those changes here. So right now it's three columns wide and you can see that if I were to go and make it one column wide, you can see that this is a very blurry image right here. And we're gonna need to change that if we want it to look good on our website. So what you need to do is change the image size to something like 1024 by 1024 pixels and it should make these images a lot more clear if they're larger images. Now, each of these images that I uploaded are large free to use images that I got off various sites. So if I wanted to just make this three wide and six per page, you can do that and you can see the image looks much more clear at 1024 by 1024. But let's go and change the quality of it to 300 by 300. So let's look at this one right here, this one, this reflective pond in the upper right. If I were to go and make this 300 by 300, you can see that it gets way more blurry, especially in that image and this one over here as well. 150 by 150, you can see it's even more blurry. So you want to make it large enough that the quality of the image is going to still look good. So I recommend using a larger image like 1024 by 1024 if possible. So right here you have the option for a masonry grid or not. I'm going to just leave that off in this case. And down here it says show title. So you might have noticed when I hover over it, it says waterfalls for this, snow mountain, and that's what the image names are for the images when I uploaded them on to WordPress. So if you wanted to, you could turn that off. And then when you hover over it, it just has this gray overlay. I'm going to go over how to change that as well. But for now, I'm just going to toggle this back on to show the title. So now we have waterfalls, snow mountain, and etc. So if we go down here, here's the query section. You can also choose to exclude certain things like certain posts that you might not want to show up in here. You could exclude those as well. And you can change the order that it's actually shown in. So it says order by date. You can choose by title, menu order, or random. So if I just went and clicked random right here, it's going to change the order. So let's say I'm happy with that. I'm going to go down here to the filter bar and here you can use filters to toggle this on. I'm going to skip over this and leave it as is and just move over to style for now since you know where these images are actually pulling from. So within here we're given some options such as the columns gap. Let's just say you want to make this like 10 pixels or something like that. You can see between each column that we have this gap but we do not have one for the row. So if we wanted to we can also make this one 10 as well. I think making it even is the way to go in this case because it looks a lot better with the even spacing there. The border radius is going to add cornered edges to each of the images. So if you wanted to, let's just make it 25 and you can see the border radius right there. The more you make it, the rounder it's going to be. I'm going to end up making it, I'll just go with 20 in this case, because then you can see the border, but it's not overwhelming. If you want to go down to item overlay, we can see that we have this gray overlay right now. We can change that as well. So here we can have different overlays. Let's just say you wanted to have a red one for some reason like that. If you make it red like this without changing the transparency here, it's just going to be full red when somebody goes over it. If you still want them to be able to see the image, you want to change the transparency within this section and then you'll be able to see it has a red tint to it in this case. 
Now I'm not going to go with red, I'll probably go with gray and something in the middle like this. So it's a nice subtle effect, but people still know that they hover over it. And then I'll go down to this section where it says color. So this is going to be going over the color of the text here. So it doesn't say text color, but that's what it's for. I'm going to make it white in this case. So you can see when you hover over it, it says mountains, waterfalls, snow mountain, stream, foggy mountain, reflect upon. I actually might make the over overlay a little bit darker here so it shows up a little bit better with this white text. And you can adjust this as needed. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. So I think that looks pretty good right there. And if we go down to typography, we can change this. I want to use something that looks pretty nice instead of the default, just plain text like that. Maybe I'll, I'll use an italic type text or something like that. Maybe like yellow tail would look good. Let me just put that on there and see how it looks. A little small, but you can see what it looks like. And that's a pretty common one to use. Let's make it 40 so it's a larger one. And you can play around with this. Maybe we can do something like play ball. And that is right here. And you can see what it looks like. I think this one actually looks a little bit better, at least for what I'm going for here. Maybe I'd make it a little bit bigger for the font as well. But you can play around with this and adjust it as needed. Another thing that we could do is let's just go and update it down here. And we can go over to where it says advanced. And then we can change things within here. You can add margin padding. You can also add motion effects. So let's just open and preview the changes right now to see what it looks like. So if we scroll down, we can see here's our portfolio widget. And if you hover over it, it will say the text just like we have there. If you were to actually click on it, it would take you to the post page right here. So that's something you want to know. And let's just say we want to add some padding to this area. And then we also want to make some changes. So when it loads, I'm going to go and refresh again up here. And if we scroll down, we see when it loads, it's already there. Let's say we want to gradually have the images come in or something like that. So we can go down to where it says motion effects right here. And then we can change the effects. So entrance animation, I'm going to just make it fade in. I'll make it go slow. And the animation delay, I'll just put a half second delay, which is 500 milliseconds. And I'll click update. So this is going to give us a little bit more animation when we come in to this images and we scroll down. You can see that there it fades in as we're scrolling down. So if you didn't see that, I'll just refresh it again and show you real quick. If we scroll down, it's going to fade in the images like that. If you want to put a longer delay than half a second, you can change this and make it a higher number. It's totally up to you. So the other thing I'm going to do, looking how it is, I think it could use a little bit of padding there. Let's go over to advanced advanced right here at the top and I'm just going to add in some padding so let me just add 80 or something like that maybe even 60 would be fine and I'll just click update and I'll go back over here we'll scroll down and we'll see that now there's more padding with these images from where it was and it's not tucked up against the bottom or the top as well so you can change this as needed but it's really easy to make changes and get this set up to have a nice portfolio display for your audience when they come to your website. So I hope this video was helpful in showing you how to use the Elementor Pro Portfolio Widget. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more WordPress related tutorials. Thanks for viewing and have a wonderful day.